Hi there, it's uh, Tim Clark coming to you with the uh, Seagull guitar and uh, this particular guitar is the Seagull Artist Mosaic CW HG EQ with the Anthem pickup uh, from LR Bags and it includes a under saddle uh, element pickup plus a mic inside which can be blended to give you a more realistic sound of what the guitar sounds like unmiked. So uh, today what I'd like to do is just explain why I chose to go with the Seagull guitar this time. I had always uh, had a Seagull since 1989 when I bought my first 12 string. It was a cedar top, uh, wild cherry uh, laminate back and sides, a solid cedar top. Uh, just recently actually uh, restored that guitar a little bit and did some work on it and everything's great with that. Uh, but a 12 string is just kind of a secondary instrument for me. I had been involved in, um, in the uh, Facebook group for Taylor Guitars and owned quite a few Taylors because of course I read a lot of the information about how artists love the Taylor guitar and, and you know the cost was very high on most of the guitars. I had a 714 CE, I had a 224 uh, Koa Deluxe and uh, my son had a 614 CE and uh, so we were very heavily into Taylor guitars but the one thing I did have a problem with when I originally bought the Taylor guitar was uh, I took it out of the, the case for the first time and was practicing one night to get ready for a live event the next day and the pickups didn't work as, uh, on a brand new guitar and so I you know I did some research and figured out how to readjust those pickups uh, properly using the Allen key and, uh, you know, I had some other issues and had to have reset up done and things like that. But overall, their quality was quite high. And, you know, I was almost 100% happy except for the original snag with the guitar. But what I found mostly was when I plugged it in, I, I always had to EQ. I had to, when I was recording it direct using the pickup in, in the system, I would have to EQ that and, and change the sound because what I was getting out of the guitar naturally was was having to be manipulated so i just thought maybe i would come up and just explain that this guitar here retails for about 2300 total including tax in canada whereas that um taylor 714 for instance was a 4600 dollars including tax in canada so now the difference between the sound and the quality of the guitar um wasn't really huge for me like this particular guitar has a nice Sitka spruce top with a nice gloss on it, but it's not real, real heavy gloss. It's uh, the sound of the instrument is still uh, able to come through. Uh, the backs and the sides are uh, mahogany, and it's actually a quite a nice, beautiful looking piece of mahogany on the back. And of course, the sides are are mahogany as well. It's using a rich light um, uh, fingerboard and a beautiful inlay at the 12th fret of a seagull. So the rich light for some might be an issue, but actually it requires far less maintenance. It doesn't require oiling, and it's very easy uh, to play. It feels just as dense as an ebony, and uh, it helps with keeping the trees that are you know hard to come by, like the ebony trees are becoming very endangered. So it's hard to do that, and actually it costs more for a rich light fingerboard, so that's not really a negative for me. Uh, it's got uh, beautiful um, finishes on it. There's no bad spots, and for $2,300, the sound of this thing is uh, almost as good as the Taylor. I actually, it surpasses the Taylor for me because when I'm recording, the the sound is a little more balanced in the mids. Uh, the highs aren't as shimmery. They're still shimmery, but they're not as shimmery as a Taylor, and it has. Uh, su sufficient enough a bass to be a balanced sound. So I'm going to play this and I'm going to alternate the audio on this track back and forth so you can hear how it sounds through the mic which I have pointed about at the 12th fret. Uh, it's a condenser mic uh, with a large diaphragm and I also have a input directly into the guitar and I'm not going to edit any of this and I've kept the controls in the center for the mixing between the element and the mic in, inside and uh, so I've kept it kind of in the midpoint and also left the volume three quarters of the way up so that I can kind of give you the sound. So here I'm just going to play some strumming to start with with a pick and this is a light pick. So for me the sound of the guitar is very easy to record. So here's some finger picking.
So, if you're in the market for a guitar, I can tell you that uh, Godin makes these guitars in Quebec, in Canada. So, for me as a Canadian, it uh, meant uh, a lot to be able to find a good quality built guitar. And a lot of what they're doing, it's hand built. So, um, especially the higher end uh, guitars like the um, Artist line, um, they hand pick and pressure test the tops and they, they take a lot of time to make sure the guitar is well designed and well built for the people who are going to own them. And they're meant to be a long-term investment, so they're going to age well, and they're only going to sound better as the wood starts to age and open up. So I hope this might be useful to you. I know I haven't been able to find a lot of videos uh, on this particular one. Uh, there is one that uh, Brickhouse Guitars did, which actually compares the 814 CE Taylor directly against this particular guitar, and I think you should go over and have a look at that, and I'll post a link to that down below. Hopefully you have uh, a great day and enjoy your guitars, whatever they might be. I'm not uh, trying to uh, suggest that you buy one or another, but for me, the Seagull line from Godin is uh, a perfect option.